Here you can see a chemical reaction taking place. We have a piece of magnesium which is in some acid and you can see that bubbling is occurring which indicates that a gas is being produced. And the key thing this tells us is that new substances are being formed during the course of the chemical reaction. So why do we use chemical equations to summarise what happens in a chemical reaction? Well as you've already seen changes occur during a chemical reaction. The material we start with is called a reactant and during a reaction we make a product. In some cases we start with several reactants and finish with several products. The arrow shows us that the reactants have changed into products. Word equations are used as the simplest way of representing what happens in a chemical reaction. We write down the names of the chemicals which are the reactants and the products. In the case of the reaction we saw in the test tube we had magnesium and hydrochloric acid and these were the reactants. The products that were formed were magnesium chloride and hydrogen. You could see the hydrogen gas bubbling out of the solution. Now let's look at some more examples of chemical reactions. Here on the left you can see some copper oxide which is a fine black powder and on the right hand side you can see some zinc oxide which is a fine white powder. And here we're doing four reactions. Each of the two oxides is being reacted with water in the left hand two tubes and each of the two oxides is being reacted with sulfuric acid in the right hand tubes. And here you can see this is copper oxide and water, zinc oxide and water, copper oxide and sulfuric acid and zinc oxide and sulfuric acid and each of these is being heated in warm water for 15 minutes. At the end we can observe any changes which have occurred. So in the case of copper oxide and water there appears to be no change. Similarly in the case of zinc oxide and water once again there appears to be no change. The white solid is clearly visible in the tube. In the case of copper oxide and sulfuric acid yes there does appear to have been a change. And similarly you can see that the, once again there has been a change in the case of zinc oxide and sulfuric acid. So we saw that in the case of copper oxide and water there was no change. The black solid had not dissolved and there was no evidence of a reaction. Similarly in the case of zinc oxide and water once again there was no evidence of a chemical reaction. There was no change in the test tube. In the case of copper oxide and sulfuric acid we saw that the copper oxide dissolved and a blue solution was formed and this is strong evidence that a reaction has occurred. Finally, in the case of zinc oxide and sulfuric acid, once again we can see that the zinc oxide has dissolved and the colourless solution has been formed and a reaction has taken place. Because copper oxide and zinc oxide don't react with water, there's no need to write a word equation for these cases. However, both of the oxides do react with sulfuric acid and we can summarise the reactions as shown in these word equations. So copper oxide plus sulfuric acid makes copper sulfate and water. Similarly zinc oxide plus sulfuric acid makes zinc sulfate plus water. Simple equations show the formulae of the reactants and products rather than using their names. So if we look at copper oxide plus sulfuric acid the formulae are shown below. CuO is copper oxide and H2SO4 is sulfuric acid. And in the case of the products, copper sulfate is CuSO4 and water is H2O. So if we take a closer look at a formula, here we have sulfuric acid H2SO4 on the screen. And the small numbers are known as subscripts. And these tell us how many atoms of each element are present in a compound. If no number is present, this tells us that there is one atom of that element. Most notably here we can see there's a 2 next to the hydrogen which tells us there are two hydrogen atoms and a 4 next to the oxygen showing that there are four of these and the absence of the number next to sulfur indicates that there is only one sulfur atom in sulfuric acid. When we write simple equations we use the formulae as shown on the screen here. So in the case of copper oxide and sulfuric acid forming copper sulfate and water the simple equation is given in orange. Similarly, in the case of zinc oxide and sulfuric acid forming zinc sulfate and water, 
The simple equation is again shown in orange. One important rule is to note that the numbers of atoms on each side of the arrow must be the same. Atoms cannot be created or destroyed in chemical reactions. So let's take a look at the first example. We have to count the number of copper, oxygen, hydrogen and sulfur atoms on the left hand side. And you can see that we have one copper, five oxygens, one sulfur and two hydrogens. Similarly on the right hand side if you count carefully you can see we have the same numbers. And in the case of zinc oxide, you look on the left hand side and count the atoms on the right hand side you can see that these numbers are once again the same.